Marchintosh is in full effect right now. This means that on social media, you'll see posts, blogs, videos, threads about vintage Mac of all eras, from the humble Mac 128 to the early Intel Macs. Every year, the Mac enthusiasts surprise us with new pieces they found and restored for the collection, or with new programs they've coded, or with new use cases that mix old and new computers alike. Search hashtag Marchintosh to find all of these on YouTube, Twitter, Mastodon, and other places. It's been going on for a few years by now. My video, though, is about the most fun I've had with old Macs in a long time, but more specifically, old Mac users. There's just a happy coincidence that this event is going on at the same time as the start of Marchintosh. It started basically like four or five days ago, and it's taking the retro Mac community by storm. It's called Hashtag Global Talk, and it's basically a network that sprung up from nothing, uh, connecting old Macs over the internet using the old Apple Talk, and also local talk um, protocols that link devices and printers together, and the magic is just making them connect to the internet with each other. So first, let me show you the cool things that I've done with it once I got successfully connected to it with my SC30. And I'll talk about the equipment and steps you need to do to get linked. But this is not going to be an extensive guide as networking Mac is not my area of expertise. I'm sure there will be far better tutorials and guides that will come up. There's one circulating right now, a blog post that I've used to success, but I still needed help to get to the finish line. Shout out to Eric Helgeson and Tom Barber, who like always were patient in troubleshooting my wrong assumptions until it worked. So here's what I use to connect to Global Talk. So here's my bench with my Mac Plus, and I'm using the SC30 over here. So let me first plug in my Blue SCSI V2. It helps with the boss errors and such. Let me power the SC30. Then plug in the RGB to HDMI sitting here. So since my setup is convoluted, I have to plug in another RGB to HDMI associated with the Mac Plus right here. And then the video signal can be routed to my LCD monitor seen on the left here. There you go. I was a fairly early adopter of Blue SCSI V2, and right away I wanted a Pico W, which gives you wireless access. It wasn't until a few months in to the release of the project that actual wireless functionality was added in the firmware. So the first units were sold with regular Picos, and I knew in advance that they would get to the finish line and add wireless access. So I went ahead and ordered a board, soldered what needed to be soldered myself, including the Pico W, which I got as a wireless variant. So there are many ways to get online. So this is one of the major steps. Uh, you could have a like Ethernet card if you wanted uh, to plug into a local area network the normal way. But the wireless access is pretty nifty for what I have, so um, I don't have an expansion card, I don't have network cards for, for my old Mac, so this is a really neat, really convenient and a modern way to do this. The first two steps that helped me connect to my LAN, my local area network, was to use a Mac TCP, a control panel item, where I selected Ethernet built-in instead of local talk, which was the default selected option. Another item that can help is to use the Apple menu tool, which is called Wi-Fi, which was programmed by Joshua. And this is to ensure that you have a stable connection to your LAN. It can help sometimes. Uh, I had issues at first where I had, I had marginal connections with the Wi-Fi from my Pico W of my Blue SCSI, so this would tell me if I was connected or not. And I don't know if it helps to stay connected, if it has any impact at all, 
but it seemed to help, so I just put it out there as a potential step that you might do. So yeah, program in 2024, Josh Stein. You can get it there. I'm gonna go check out what's available online right now in the Global Talk network. So I open my router settings, I start it. Sometimes I get this error. This means I need to go to control panels, select network. And for some reason I don't understand, it goes back to local talk built in, but I need either talk alternative here. So the switch is performed, takes a while. Go back to router manager, start the router. It complains about some address issue. I just click OK and I'm fine. I'm gonna speed this up. So it took about two minutes and, and the reason is probably because um, there's been a lot of computers that were added. So I guess it has to scour the information and has to ping all of these servers, uh, which are here. I'm gonna, gonna hide the addresses for obvious reasons. But uh, yeah, the list is pretty long. I've got about 25 machines in my list, in my host list here. So I'm ready to go into Chooser. And let's see who's online. Let's start with uh, file servers with Apple shares. So you can see the list here. So let's check out Eric's Edge. I connect as a guest. I don't have any passwords on any of those servers. So yeah, you can see his folder here. Let's check this box. So there you have it. That's his folder. I've put in some uh, a few of my items here earlier. So uh, yeah, the promo of Mac Paint here. Let's check that out. And there you go, some kind of promo card I made for my own channel, but you can see other things in Eric's folder, so let's check that out. He put in the hypercard stack, uh, yeah, it's right there in this set file. So he programmed a tic-tac-toe game that works acro across local talk, you can grab it here, so I could copy it over to my local drive here. And you can see other people's uh, greetings and little messages they left each other. Scott was here. Whoa, this is a IRS image of the future. So I can show you a bit of what people have left me while I was sharing my uh, share folder scene here. So, in order to share, you need to make sure that in control panels uh, you do a proper sharing setup and you have to start file sharing here. You have to see this message for it to work. Once it is set up, uh, your share folder should look like this. So let's see what people have left me. This is an absolutely new file that I haven't seen yesterday. So hackers is cast. Seems legit. So let's click without thinking about it. Oh, it's a JPEG view. So it's, it's going to take a while to load and decompress. And it's probably going to load a uh, photo decompressor. All right. So I could bring this file over to my uh, like my modern PC and check it out there. So as you can see, people have left me some special icons here just to say they've been here. Um, I've got a few programs that I've taken from uh, other people's shared folder, like this Macintosh tracker, which blew my mind away because I wasn't aware that this early vintage of Mac from 1989 uh, would be able to play mod files, but it really does. It chugs along, it plays, plays great. 
So I brought along some of my mod files from my own collection and people can get those files since it's in my share folder and people can take whatever they want from here. Uh, there was a hypercard stack here, Live Laugh Local Talk, which is a nice name. And I think I was missing the exact hypercard version that was used to create this. But there's no problem, you can find whatever you need, there's a bunch of people sharing apps all over the local talk, so you don't need to do the whole rigmarole of, like, finding stuff in Macintosh Garden, taking set files down, uh, making sure you extract it with the proper utility. Most of the programs you, you need to deal with the files that are shared are found in the same network in Global Talk. So there you have it, arrows at mastodon.social. So let's quit this. Hello from Gutbum. It's just a simple folder, but the message is effective. Greetings. There's a simple text message from Calibo, Calibu. Calibu. Marchintosh 2024. A special folder from Steve of Mac84 fame. Uh, there's another message from Ian Scott, aka Polpo, which uh, he's the man behind the special uh, Pico Gus sound card for vintage PCs. It imitates uh, Gravis ultrasound cards and others. Let's see Eric's Edge promo message. Which is a nice, simple text loaded graphic. Very simple to peruse with this uh, information here. Check him out, he has a great channel. He concentrates on the hypercard, but uh, in general, lots of vintages of Max. So, another thing you can do is go to Chooser and do the printing shenanigans. This is really fun, so I can select. You have to select Apple Talk Image Writer first, and then you find someone who has a, an item seen here. So I could send directly to Eric Elgison, who uh, hosts the Blue Scuzzy CEO printer. And once this is done, you could open a certain file from uh, your favorite program and just send it as if it was your own printer. So if I select print, uh, you can see here the, the printer is correctly defined here. So I won't send this particular file, but let me show you what I've sent. One of the fun things I did was to send something to print to Steve of Mac84. And the thing is, he put up a live stream on YouTube that was showing his Image Writer 2 uh, live for uh, something like five or six hours. So while I was sending the print command to his exact printer on the network, I saw it print live. And this is wild. This is one of the f funnest thing I've done in a while. Oh, wow. Oh, that's some cool art. Oh, but a cutout. Uh, or maybe it just didn't have uh, anybody who, a signature or anything. That is beautiful. That's awesome. So one of the most surprising things that sprung up in the last days is the HyperCard stack that was a kind of a spur of the moment development for uh, chatting on this network from Calibu at Bitbank Social. Uh, he's the one hosting the Baronet zone. So let's connect to it. It's pretty laggy, it's not the best, but just the fact that it works is pretty impressive. Let's let's connect as a guest, and the neat thing is that you can see the older messages, but it takes a while to load. So the main thing is to pick this, the correct settings here. There's a polling rate, and it kind of freezes your computer while it checks for new messages across the network. So picking a higher value is beneficial for you, actually. So here you see the messages load from the last few days. And it's, I think it's been up since uh, early yesterday morning. And the neat thing is that it uses some icons from the Caro font. Let's type a message. So 
So I just pressed enter, but it's going to take a while. So I'll, I'll leave it in real time to see, give you an impression of how slow it is. And there you go. And there's a bot. <laughs> there's even a bot because uh, this chat room is not populated at all times, as you can imagine. People have lives outside of Global Talk. So, yeah. There you go. On March 3rd, Paul Rickard's blog post is what started this beautiful madness. But while it is brilliant and is what helped start it all, it's a little rough on the edges. I know that Steve, aka Mac84, is working on an exhaustive A to Z guide, which you'll be able to see out there when it's posted. And I'll make sure to edit the description of this video when it's out. So what are my final thoughts about hashtag global talk? I think I can sum it in this way. It feels like a community within a community, like those networks you could tap into right away if you lived in a dorm in a college campus in the 90s. I never did myself, but I regularly visited friends who did, and it was quite the experience to visit the public folders back then. But this is better. People are older, it's retro Macintosh specific, and as the days pass on, people are finding new ideas to test out in the form of games, chat clients, and such. Sending out prints and watching them appear live on dot matrix printers is an experience I didn't know I'd get this year, and I love it. As for the files you find, of course you can probably find them all out there on websites such as Macintosh Garden, but this is different. What you see in each person's folder is a curated collection that shows people's angle with their interest about old Macs. When you have access to everything all at once on the web, it loses a bit of magic and you cease to understand people's personality. This is a feeling that makes me think back about the days of dial-up BBSs, where certain places would focus on certain specialties. Soon, you'll be able to follow guides in order to bring an emulated Mac in there, so there will be no necessity to buy, own, and maintain a vintage Mac to get there. My main takeaway is that these cozy, quirky networks that we can build out of our shared passion really proves that a network's value is higher than the sum of its parts. Can't wait to see you out there. Take care and see you next time.